and we'll wait. Um, we'll wait another minute or two to just make sure we got everyone here. Um, looks look like uh, Levent Balant. We just had you join us. So everyone's working on the activity that the instructions are in the top left hand corner for reflecting on the five minute YouTube video you already watched about the flip classroom model draft a true false question about it. So keep that draft to yourself, but uh, we will I'll tell us next step in a second. Um, looks like we have Duke and Ruth who just joined us. So um, we have already actually gotten started. I was, um, we haven't officially begun, but everyone is working on the instructions in the top left hand corner of the screen. You'll see it says reflect on the five minute YouTube video you already watched about the flip classroom model. Draft a true false question about it. So hold that true false question to yourself. Maybe write it on a scrap piece of paper or a Word document on your screen. Um, in about a minute, I'll tell us what we're going to do next. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I see Peggy and a couple other people might be having some internet connections on their, their side of it, but um, I want to go ahead and move forward because I know our time is pressing and I'm really excited to have uh, so many of you here for the webinar on flipping a remote hybrid online face-to-face -face socially distanced class, right? That's a lot. Um, and uh, we have already gotten started. All of you have begun uh, reflecting on that five minute YouTube video I sent ahead of time to you and drafting a true false question. Um, and so as a couple of you anticipated, what I would love is if you could go ahead, at least five of you, not all of you, but however many of you, write your true false question on the blue whiteboard in front of us. Now, please, you know, um, you're going to type it, you're going to need to type it because if we use the pencil and things, we're not going to have enough space. You do not need to put the word true false there because I have that at the top. So if you go to your top left of your screen and you see a little bit of a T, click on that. Then you can take a color and then you can type your true false question in there. So let's get at least five of them up on the board. Do not put the answer on the board, of course. Um, so um, go ahead and a couple of you did this already and I deleted it. Uh, oh, heads up, you're going to have to use colors that um, we can see on a blue background. So, um, so whoever did that green, you may need to redo that. <laughs> um, and uh, what a lot of you are doing with these different webinars is you're also learning how to use the tools in Blackboard Collaborate, right? So you're getting to see how you could do this with your own class. Um, um, great. Okay. Let's let's see. We have space for a few more there in the middle, or maybe under the the bottom. Good. And usually the whiteboard kind of adjusts the ones that went off the screen, but we may end up having you have to speak those out loud. I still can't read the green one. I think. Oh, oh, I saw it. The person who wrote as um, the orange flip classroom of our center technology. Got it. Any? Oh, we got a. Someone double writing over the purple. Maybe that'll clean up in a second. Let's see if we can fit a couple more in, or at least one more in.
we may have to, whoever wrote the purple ones, we may have to have you guys state them out loud because um, uh, that's okay, Irina. That's okay. I see if I delete them, I'm going to delete all of them and I don't want to do that the way that it works on my end. So um, let's see. Anyone else want to put one more on? We have a little space over here on the corner of the right, although it may go off. Looks like someone did. Okay, well, I think I think we have some good ones to begin with. And um, uh, what we're now going to do is, oh, okay, perfect. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> um, what we are now going to do is I'd like you to unmute your mics um, if you want to answer I want everyone now to take a stab at answering these true false questions. So um, if you want to try one of them, you know, raise your hand and then I'll call on you and unmute your mic and let's see, do you think it's true or false? And then we want to hear from the person who came up with the, the question. So, um, so please, there's a little raise hand function. If you guys have never used it, it's kind of down by your microphone, so you can click on that. Perfect. Okay. Christine, go ahead. Hi. I'll try and do the first one that says, in a flipped classroom, students get content online and students work on problems. I'm assuming that it says they work on problems in class together discussing, and then that would be true. Okay. Do we have an answer? Whoever wrote that question, you can go ahead and just unmute your mic because I can't tell who wrote it. Oh, yes, I wrote it, and that is true. And please identify your names since we oh, can't always we don't have your cameras Dodds. on. Mm -hmm. Sorry, say that again. Sharon Dodds. Sharon Dodds. Okay, so Sharon agreed it was true, and Christine, you got it right. Good job. Awesome. Okay, next. Who wants to try to answer a question? Raise your hand. Sure, Jamie. Hi, everyone. This is Jamie Workman. I will do the orange slash green one. Um, flipping classrooms or flipping classrooms require no technology. And I think that is false. Why? Explain that a little bit, maybe. Um, because students need to access technology uh, prior to class, uh, whether it's through um, computer, phones, however they're used to doing it at home, um, to prepare their content in advance. Okay, okay. So thank you, Jamie. So who wrote that question? Could you confirm if Jamie's correct? I think it was Irina, wasn't um, it? Yes. yes, I'm right. Speak, Irina. Yeah. Yes, that was correct. Yes, that's false. Cor okay, you're right. False. Correct being false. Um, um, great, thank you. So thanks, guys. You can mute your mics. Okay, someone else who wants to try answering another question? Raise your hand and... Um, I'll call on you. I want everyone to try answering a question, even if it seems obvious, or I'll start calling on you. Awesome, Ruth, yeah. Hey, this is Ruth Brandvik. I'll answer flipped classrooms provide more time during class to do activities, labs, and work, and I'm going to say that's true. Okay, so who wrote that question? Is Ruth correct? Is that true? I'm Leanne Bryan, and yes, that is accurate, Ruth. Awesome. Very cool. You guys are good. Uh, Jamie, yes, you want to try another one? Um, I just wanted to chime in, and it, it's hard to see because I think both of us that chose purple, it wrote on top of each other. So my question was one of the purple ones, and it was basically the same question. Um, so, yes, that is true in that uh, flip classrooms provide more time for students to do activities, labs, work. So just wanted to let everyone know that that's basically what mine was as well. Awesome. Good, good, good. Very cool. Thanks, Jamie, for filling us yep. in on that. Okay, who wants to try answering another one that we haven't answered yet? Yeah, Lee, go for it. Okay, so I feel like I'm choosing the trick question, but students never use phones in flipped classes, and I feel like that's false because they could use their phones to watch content before class. Ooh, okay, who wrote the question? Hi, this is Christine. That was me. And yes, you answered it correctly. That is false. Students will be using phones in flipped classrooms and in <laughs> even in other classrooms. Yeah, but but why did Lee, Lee, maybe you can tell me, why did you think it was a little tricky, though? Because, like, 
you know, someone might think, well, but it's a technology, but I, I get, Lee, why you're like, hmm, why did you, why were you a little perplexed by that question? Well, um, in true false questions, the never always statements always catch me. Um, but <laughs> saying that they wouldn't use it in class, mm. I was like, is it saying in the flip, like in the classroom or just in general? Mm. Um, cause you can watch content beforehand, but then also just in general in the classroom, they could use, uh, different apps that we use in the classroom to help out. So, um, it was like, am I reading it properly or is this a translation or? <laughs> well, and what you guys are picking up on is that the five minute YouTube video you guys watched wasn't very clear on, it seemed to have almost a bifurcation that like the technology happens outside of the in-class part. And it doesn't happen on in the in class part. So what you but what you guys are picking up on is that's not necessarily true. And Christine's saying yes, a flipped classroom can still include technology in the face to face class part. So um, so yeah, that was a kind of nuance that that five minute video didn't um, clarify very well. I thought so. I'm glad we are with our true and false questions. Um, okay, do we have others? What else do we have on here? What about this red one? Who wants to try answering the red question? Sure, Sharon, go for it. Well, students do not need to have access to content at any time. That's got to be false. Do not need to have access to content at any time. Okay, who, uh, we've got a lot of negatives there too. So we're, who, who asked this question? <laughs> That was actually Christine again. Once I start writing questions, I keep writing them. <laughs> so, okay. yeah, yeah, I meant for that to be false. So you answered it correctly. One of the things that they said in the video was that you want students to be able to access their content, to access their videos, to access what you've curated at any point that's convenient for them. So yeah. like us in theory at VSU, Blazeview is in theory available 24 hours a day. Correct. Yeah, good, good. Great. Thank you, guys. Okay, let's see. What do we have left? We have, um, I guess, at least I'm seeing, uh, uh, I mean, some of these are similar, but that bottom question, in a flip situation, content is delivered remotely. Who wants to try that question? Answering it. Go for it, even if it seems obvious, because it may not be, right? What's, is there a difference between the word remote and online? Let's see, who hasn't answered a question yet? This is where now I get to call on you guys. Um, what about Dave? Can you talk? I can't remember if you said, no, uh, your microphone doesn't work. You could text though, your answer. You wanna try texting your answer? True. His answer is true. Dave says, in a flip situation, content is delivered remotely. True. Who asked that question? Duke did. Uh -huh. and, that was, and that was my intended correct answer. <laughs> and then Dave just typed, is remote online in your mind? Um, my thought is yes, but also it kind of goes into that available at any time. Um, mm -hmm. and so yes, if I'm wrong, y'all tell me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's really interesting. I didn't plan for us to debate the notion of remote and online. I kind of just planted that right now. I probably should know. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm in agreement with you guys. Um, there, there is a lot of kind of debate about it right now in teaching and learning because they want to differentiate fully online, like course design built courses from remote teaching. Um, so so no, so the scholars of teaching and learning and most of the practitioners in online instruction, they would say there's a difference. Um, um, so like what a, what a lot of us in pivoting quickly in the spring was more remote teaching than actual online teaching. But hey, maybe we'll get into that a little more with um, some of the later activities. Um, but for what you guys are describing, it's the same thing. So. Um, so, so here's what's interesting. Um, why did we, um, why did we just, um, why did we just do this activity? Please feel free to raise your hand. Yeah, Lee. Because you flipped this class. Woohoo! I flipped this webinar. You want to say more about that? 
<laughs> so by having us watch the YouTube video prior to arrival to class, we got the, the base information that we need to know about what is a flipped class, but then now we're going to get more specific information and details and how to's so that we can kind of practice it more than have like the theory talk to us. We already got the theory in the video. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like I attempted with curating the uh, the using the YouTube video uh, like our video said to do um, for our content to deliver that content asynchronously online independently. So uh, at home, like we were saying on your own schedule and you could watch it at your own pace, of course, before today. Um, and that, as Lee said, is now going to free up time during our webinar. So this would then be our our next part of our flip for us to really go more in depth, right? And and get um, into active learning, like we're already starting to do with the true false questions, but also get into more of the harder work of learning. So not just lecturing, but and me not just being the sage on the stage, but you guys starting to collaborate together, right? To be student centered rather than teacher centered and to reach higher orders of thinking. Um, so notice that within the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes now, we've summarized the main points of what a standard flipped classroom is, right? We achieve the lower order of recalling facts. Um, and now I don't need to spend more time doing that, right? Um, of course, I corrected things and refined things, but now we're going to move on with um, going beyond the, the core level of recall or the core level of the basic traditional model. Um, but before I do that, I want to say one more reason why I did this true false quiz activity specific. So I asked you guys to come up with true false questions and quiz each other because if any of you have ever flipped a classroom before or you've talked to your colleagues who have, one concern or challenge they've always said is that their students don't watch or consume the, the content before they come to the class. And um, lots of books on flipped learning talk about that. So you'll discover one of the big challenges is getting students to watch or consume those pre-recorded lectures or videos or narrated PowerPoints. But the, the way to then hold students accountable to that is to have accountability strategies built into your active learning face-to-face -face class with potentially like I did with a quiz low stakes assessment. So yes, same Donna, definitely. And when I when um, Donna wrote same trouble with assigned readings, yes. And so when I say content, it could include assigned reading. It doesn't have to be a video exactly. It could be a text. So look what we did now. We did a low stakes um, quiz assessment accountability. You guys weren't graded on it. You don't grade your students on it. Um, but it held everyone accountable uh, to, and if you do this repeatedly, it'll, people will get in a routine and expect it. Um, hopefully it held you accountable to watching the video, or at the very least, if you didn't, now you learned the main points from your peers. Um, and um, the other thing is notice that this wasn't me just giving you guys the quiz. You came up with the questions, and then you guys tested each other. So this is a more collaborative peer active learning type of assessment in a flipped classroom that you could do, right? Um, so I wanted today's webinar to model and embody what uh, we're talking about. So hopefully you're getting some good ideas. And it was fun, right? You kind of have fun with this. So um, I'm going to move now to, um, oops, sorry, my PowerPoint slides jumping all over the place, to the learning outcomes then for what we're going to do now for the next kind of 40 minutes. By the end of this webinar, you're going to be able to describe the standard flip classroom. Well, guess what? We've kind of accomplished that already. Hopefully right now you can define and describe what the standard flipped classroom is. Um, you're going to experience a simulation of flipped online learning. Guess what? We're doing that with the literally this being a synchronous webinar and then you having the asynchronous content before. You're going to identify low stakes assessments or accountability strategies for student engagement with flipped learning. So for instance, that's what I just was telling you about doing a quiz. Um, and it was an ungraded, low um, quiz that you could, um, you know, monitor for participation credit, for instance, or you could ask them to do, like in writing classes, they'll do like a one minute reflection paper, um, or maybe you could have students do a quick note share 
at the beginning of class. So um, those are a couple different examples of low stake assessment and accountability strategies to um, engage students in flipped learning. And then last, but really this is where we're going to spend most of our time on, is evaluate alternative models of flipping. Because I to go beyond the traditional flip, uh, because really I think it's the non-traditional flips, the alternative ones, that are going to speak to our current situation with COVID and high flex and all those things. So what are these alternative models of flipping? For instance, can we flip a fully online class, for instance? Hmm. The research would say yes. So I have put up here a chart of at least five different types of alternative flips. And by the way, I didn't make up any of these. These are all from the research on and practitioners, you know, faculty teachers who do flipping. I'll have a slide at the very end today that has all the references that you could check out. I, I can say, though, I made up the word backwards flip. <laughs> At least I don't know anyone else has called it that through a conversation I was having with Tim Hankel, who you may recall he used to be at VSU. He was very involved in the Idea Center. And he and I were emailing a couple of weeks ago about this. And he was describing something. And I was like, let's that's a backwards flip. And so I have to say, basically, through my conversation with Tim, I came up with number four. But it relates to some other things I was reading in the literature. But I liked the word backwards flip, because you'll see, I think it'll recognize uh, really what this thing is. Sometimes it's called a hybrid flip, has some other names in the literature. But I'm going to briefly explain these to you, but I intentionally don't want to give you much more detail since we're going to go into breakout groups and you guys are going to work through them and critique them in your groups. Because remember, I'm flipping this class, so I should not be lecturing a ton here. So I'm not. Um, and so, but this will be my quote micro lecture on alternative models of flips. So, as you see, one of the first top kind of alternative models of flipping is you do a standard flip, like what we were talking about, but it's not a long recorded lecture uh, from the portion that's online. Rather, it's a micro lecture online. And so, many in many sense, what I did for this webinar is a, at least so far, an example of this. Uh, standard flipping without a long lecture, using a micro lecture. The fact that that YouTube video was only five minutes, for instance. So they recommend chunking your your online content. Um, a lot of faculty, and I can show similar. When I first heard about Fifth Flip Classroom, I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to spend hours recording an hour long lecture. And that's exactly what they're saying with this alternative flip. No, you don't. You don't have to record an hour long lecture. In fact. Research shows students aren't going to watch it. So, so how, right? How could you do it? You could chunk it up in these 15, 20 minute increments. Or as I use other people's stuff, <laughs> use a YouTube video or a podcast or a film or a textbook publisher provided content or, or readings, um, things like that. So that's the standard flipping, but without the long recorded lectures that you hear most people end up doing, because that's kind of what a traditional standard flip is thought of. Um, I'm going to go through these quickly and then just briefly ask if you have questions and then I'll give instructions for, for our active learning that we're going to do. So number two, alternative model to flipping is a weekly, bi-weekly, or every, once every unit flip. So again, when I first learned about flip classroom, I was like, oh my, again, this is so much work. I'm never going to be able to do that. And, they, and so guess what? People have now said you don't. You don't need to flip every class. You could just do flip Fridays, for instance. Um, it was really I saw online a faculty member at Berkeley who does flip Fridays. Um, or specifically, you choose when to flip around the very challenging concepts or when application is needed, right? Because that's really when your students need to do the in-depth active learning and, and have your um, you there to facilitate that with them. Um, so thinking a little more in a strategic time and uh, way about your flipping is number two, right? Do I really, you know, could I leverage this just for once a week or every other week or or at a particular point in a unit? Um, and I and I don't want to give you away at our next activity, but start thinking about how these things might help with our COVID-19 situation and even the fact that our groups or our classes are kind of broken up into halves. And so 
Um, so number three, partial lesson flip. So similarly, you know, in some sense, I think I just almost did a little bit of a partial lesson flip, right, where I'm still doing a little lecturing. Like we're kind of thinking of this almost as a, the face-to-face -face part, although that'll talk about number five, but I'm still doing a little lecturing, right, right now. This is my lecture. Um, but it's very brief, right? I really don't even have more than five minutes, not even 15 minutes. Um, and, you know, right before we start this next activity to clarify concepts. So that this, what I'm doing right now would be an example of a partial lesson flip. And then four, a backwards flip. So um, <laughs> it was so interesting, Tim, talking about this. So basically it's backwards, backwards. We were just talking about that actually your lecture or your content deliverer occurs in your face-to-face -face class and the act of learning all occurs online. Hmm, right? How about that, right? Pretty crazy to think about. Like Tim was totally think Tim said he was thinking about that because of social distancing issues in the classroom. And so pretty cool to think about flipping backwards um, for the current situation. So I'll leave it at that because I, I want you guys to end up doing the, the creative thinking here. But Okay, and number five, fully online flip. So in some sense, what I'm actually doing is also a fully online flip. And so we're seeing too, these things aren't mutually exclusive, but the literature does talk about that if you think of your fully online course, the asynchronous components would be the content delivery, right? For the lower order thinking, just like I did with that video, right? Recall concepts, right? Just recall them and I quiz you on them. Um, whereas the synchronous part, that's what we're doing right now is the active learning. That's where the higher orders of thinking. So then we do a video conference like we're doing right now. We do different active learning activities. Then I'm going to break you out into groups. So it's kind of neat to also think how a fully online flip, right, doesn't ever need the face to face, but it's still within this same kind of model of thinking of flip classroom. Okay, so do I have any initial questions about these five? Sure, Sandy. Jamie, I just wondered, um, I use McGraw-Hill's texts and I have them uh, do the Learn Smart activities before I lecture on those subjects. And I've never thought of it as flipping, I've thought of it more as um, at, at least immersing them in the vocabulary, but it, it sort of looks like it's it falls into standard flipping to a, a tiny extent, or am I overthinking? So explain to me where they're doing what. What part are they doing online? What part are they doing face to face? Okay, or what they have to do before they come to class for a particular mm -hmm. topic is they have to go into a their face -to -face textbook. Class, you mean? Pardon? Before they come to a face to face, face, -to -face class? Face class, yeah. Okay. They have to go into their text. They have to, well, they, they only have ebooks, so they what they have to do is complete an electronic exercise. And if they're good at figuring stuff out, they don't have to read a single thing, and I tell them that. Or if they, you know, if, they, if this isn't familiar, they read the chapter and then answer this set of lower order questions. So it's. Mm -hmm. It's getting them into it. And so to a certain extent, it's a little bit of a flip, maybe a half flip, but I don't know. Well, well, and that's where I would say, yeah, you're fit. And again, these aren't mutually exclusive. And, you know, the literature is always trying to put labels on things that we do or do not do consciously, you know, but, okay. um, I, but I think you're giving an example of like a micro lecture that you've used from other people's stuff, right? Like you said, you pulled it from textbook publisher provided content. Right. It's not a lecture. It's their ebooks. They go and do. They have to do stuff in their ebook about the topic before I lecture okay. on it. So they okay. they've opened. They've they've gotten in the shallow waters before they have to swim. Oh, okay. Then I actually. Okay. And Maybe then you. Lecture, and then you lecture on it in the class. Yeah, in much more okay. detail. Okay. Okay. Guess what? You're number four. You're the backwards flip. Seriously. Right? Look. Okay. Yeah. You're, yeah. Because look. Active peer land learning in some, although yours was more, I would call asynchronous and a little more not peer led, but more individual, right? If they're just doing the quizzes by themselves right. uh, before and then you're lecturing in the content in the class. So, but we'll talk because I mean, the thing is the literature about flipping really does want the active learning to be done collectively. That is a big difference. They do want it to be a collectivist, comes from like the theory, like collectivist theory rather than behavioral theory. And so that okay. isn't fitting in where they're doing these activities on their own. Okay, said, thanks. Yep. 
So, but good. Okay, so what you guys were just thinking is great. So here's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to um, have Blackboard Collaborate randomly assign you into groups, and I'm going to do that in a second, so bear with me, but I want to tell you what we're going to do. Oh, look at me. Of course I didn't prepare. Um, hold on one sec. I got to get, I, I did this the other day in another training. I need to get a, a web link um, I got to pull up for you guys. So what you're going to do in your groups is I have a collective, a collaborative Google Doc that you're going to work on in your groups. And I apologize. I should have put this web link on my desktop so that I knew where to get it really quickly. Um, so let's see. Um, so apologies, waiting for my file to open here. Okay, here it is. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so I'm going to put in the chat a Google Doc, and it's shared and edible by all of you. Actually, Donna, you were in a training with me the other day where I used a similar one. Um, and so, um, but this is, I'm going to explain a little bit how we're going to use this. So everyone, you're going to need to click on that Google Doc and have that up in a separate um, window. Um, but let me explain what we're going to do. So I'm going to assign you, or Blackbird's going to assign you to random breakout groups. And um, you're going to be assigned to five different breakout groups, right? So I'm going to break you into the one, two, three, four, five alternative models of flipping. And in that breakout group, you're going to see from that Google Doc, you're going to be tasked with um, coming up with the pros and cons of that type of flip. You can see in that Google Doc, it's a chart. And as a, in your small group, you want to fill in that chart. Now, everyone is going to be editing this at the same time, and I'm okay with that. I know, Donna, you were in a training with me the other day where we didn't want everyone to be editing at the same time, but actually, I'm okay with everyone editing at this time because I'm wanting to use the Google Doc today as a like a note share, a collaborative doc. So, but just heads up as you write in there because you're going to see other people, it's going to be moving around because it's live. So, if that drives you nuts, then download it and save it and fill in your chart and then we can add it in after the fact. So but this is a live document that all of you are going to be editing at once. So, um, so you'll fill in pros and cons with your group. And um, as you think through pros and cons, you can make the, you know, the boxes bigger, you know, just try not to delete things. Um, but what I want you guys to also think about is pros and cons about the pedagogy in general, so but so pre-COVID, but now think also during COVID. So how could backwards flip be a pro for managing, you know, the social distancing class or the fact that we have to break students out into groups, you know, 10 come one day and 10 come another day or something like that. So so think about pros and cons of the pedagogy in general, but then I definitely want you guys to add ones about um, COVID area, COVID context, and social distancing and stuff. And um, notice from this activity, right, we're doing the active learning, the breakout groups, and you're going to achieve this higher order of thinking of evaluation and application, right? You're critiquing pros and cons, and you're applying it to a new situation. So, um, so it'll be really cool. So perfect. Oh, time. So you guys are going to have about eight to ten minutes. I, I have enough time for ten minutes. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, jump in the, the rooms. I haven't ever tried to use the timer in Blackboard Collaborate, if there is one, um, and tell you guys when time is up. But we'll come back as a large group around 2.45 or so. And uh, as I said, at least make sure eventually to copy and paste your notes in this live shareable doc, because we're going to all have this document now as like a collaborative note. Um, at the end. And when we come back as a group, you're going to do, I'm going to ask volunteers to present. Um, and, um, you know, as a group, we will debate and discuss and talk through and things like that. So, um, but we probably won't go through all of them. We may just talk about the ones you, you find most challenging or interesting or relevant. So is everyone clear on the instructions? Oh, I just realized I'm going to probably have to figure out how to share this slide in your small groups. I've done that before, but one heads up, it may take me a couple minutes to do that because I'm going to have to share it in each group. If I were you, I would um, I would take, if you have your phone near you, like a cell phone, take a screenshot right now of the slide 
And that's, I've used that when I do video conferencing with students. If I can't really get my slides into their breakout groups, just, you know, take a picture on your phone and so you'll have it in your, your small group. Um, Peggy, I'm gonna, it's gonna randomly assort you guys. And so when it, I'm gonna do it right now. And when it randomly assorts you, I'll see, and you should be able to see which number group you're in. But if not, I'm gonna jump into every group and remind you who you are. So literally the number of the group will correspond with what model of flipping, right? So, but some of you may not know how to see it in Blackboard. So I will try to jump into each group and tell you what number you are. But if you know how to look at the group panel when I do this, that'll, that'll correspond to it. I'm not gonna bother labeling them, but it should work out that way. So let me get in. So randomly assign. I need five. And, um, oh, okay, here, actually here, it is listing already. So Donna, Ellis, and Ruth, you're gonna be in group one. Kanika, Peggy, Sandy, you're gonna be in group two. Irina, Jamie, and Sarah, you're gonna be in group three. Christine, Duke, and Sharon, you'll be in group four. And Brian, Dave, and Lee, you'll be in group five. Okay, so here we go. I'll pop in and out to say hi, but use the Google Doc. Open the file options menu at the value and to share, select share with groups. Okay.